Okay, guys, it is March 2022. Uh, yes, things have changed a lot in the last month. Um, wow, it's a crazy world out there right now. Um, but we're here to drink some wine. We're here to talk about wine. Um, wine makes me happy. Um, wine kind of lifts my spirits. Wine kind of gets me through, uh, you know, some tough times at times. Um, and in this time uh, where things seem a little uncertain, uh, I, I, I'm gonna do what I keep doing, which is talking about wine. So uh, let's do this. Uh, this is your March uh, Seller Series six pack. Um, it's about $150, uh, you know, after the 20% discount. Um, so again, great deal. Um, as always, uh, deep discounts here. We have, you know, two whites and four reds. We're still kind of, uh, it's cold out, you know, still drinking uh, red wine. Um, but we have kind of a trio of red wines here that I think are, Kind of funky and unique and things like they make like a few hundred cases of these like uh like they're, they're tiny um you know we've got a, a friend of ours giovanna Maronia that we had a chance to visit uh you know in italy finishing up with another female winemaker here a really fun range so um let's jump into march so this is giovanna madonia um giovanna uh you know makes wines in romagna so emilia romagna is really kind of like two different uh, parts of the same kind of Italian state. Um, and Romagna is in the Po River Valley, um, you know, kind of up and over the mountains from like Florence in uh, Tuscany. Um, and, you know, kind of on the, the this run down to the Po River where they grow Sangiovese and this white grape called um, Albana. Historically, they used to make uh, Albana in a sweet style, but this is this is secco or, or dry. Um, the wines, are, these are kind of like winter whites. Uh, it has a little bit more kind of texture, um, and I shouldn't say texture, like it, it has kind of a deeper golden color. Um, it has more ripe fruits on the nose. Um, it is, you know, stainless steel, uh, but it's grown on, um, you know, kind of these uh, clay, uh, clay-based soil. So there's a bit of fatness to the wine. So I've always thought of these wines as um, being very distinct, um, not really smelling or tasting like a lot of other, like, you know, Pinot Grigios or Suave. It just has kind of its own Italian white wine character to it, which, it's hard for me to put a, you know, kind of a, you know, a label on it, which is kind of why I love the wine. So when you pull up to her house, she's got peacocks roaming around, you know, it's a very idyllic setting. You know, her, her partner is a visual artist. Um, they're just really flipping good cooks in the kitchen. I mean, I had a lunch with them and it really kind of made me uh, understand the importance of food and wine for some people and how they start to make their wine. So uh, a great kind of gastronomic wine here. So. Uh, lovely wine from Giovanna Maronia. We are going to uh, the uh, very Atlantic, uh, you know, coast, the Atlantic stretch of the Loire River. Um, this is about as far uh, west as you can go along the Loire before you, before you turn into salt water. So, uh, you know, this is Domaine de la Combe. Uh, this is brand new. Like this wine, like just came into the states like uh, a week ago. Um, you know, only a handful of cases came into the state, and we grabbed pretty much all of them so um, it's a small you know one one hectare plot um, on, on Gneiss and schist soils um, you know in this very new area of, of Mus Muscadet you know so uh, you know this is a producer called Pierre Henri um, you know young winemaker who's a fifth generation winemaker he uh, you know started his biodynamic conversion in 2016 and is now you know certified uh, biodynamic but let's back up it's Muscadet. What is Muscadet? The wines are, are kind of light and chiseled usually, like you eat them with like mussels and oysters and all that good stuff. And then there's this whole other world of Muscadet where the wines are, are, are textured and big and they've got all of this lees aging that presents all of these amazing uh, aromatics, um, you know, kind of rich brioche, uh, uh, you know, complete aromatics. So that's why I think of this as, as a winter white. Um, just a really cool, uh, cool wine. 26 months uh, on the lees before bottling. Uh, yeah, great new Muscadet. Love it. Um, reds. Let's move into the reds. Uh, this is Berlotto. Um, you know, uh, Berlotto does not need much of an introduction, uh, you know, in terms of the world of, of, of Barolo. Um, you know, uh, this winemaker is awesomely historic. Um, you know, their single vineyard Barolos uh, are, are, are wildly coveted. But in the winery, they also make great Barbera, great Dolcetto, and great Frasia. So Frasia, like what, what's that? Um, you know, they make, they make 300 cases of this right here. Um, and 
you don't really see it all that often because it's it is quite limited so Phrasia, the best way to think of it for me is very fresh black fruit. You're going to see a theme here with this very fresh, uh, uh, completely uh, open, aromatically uh, black fruit, but still tight and composed on the palate. High acidity, uh, bright, bright black fruit, super fresh. Like it is a fun uh, alternative from a great Barolo producer. So, yeah, yum zone. Uh, okay, moving on to uh, southwestern. Uh, actually. Yeah, I'll talk about this producer first. So, Alessandro Viola. Um, we are in uh, north northwestern Sicily, kind of like over by Palermo, uh, where they make Marsala, etc. Uh, we don't see a lot of uh, we don't see a lot of wine from that part of Sicily uh, traditionally here. Um, it's eighty percent Nero uh, Nero d'Avola and twenty percent Syrah, um, aged in chestnut barrels. Um, they don't fine or filter it. Uh, they don't add any uh, SO two. It's all wild yeast and it's all biodynamically farmed. So you can kind of see like where we're going here. Um, you know, uh, more or less a first generation self-taught winemaker. Um, yeah, there's just a wild streak, like I said, kind of moving, especially between these two wines right here, that they kind of just jump out of the glass. They're really, really fresh and bright. Um, I love uh, how spring-like they are um, in a way because they're built on kind of maybe some lighter frames. Um, and just how fresh that they kind of, that, that they really, really are. So really cool Sicilian wine right there. So we are going to talk uh, about Alfredo Maestro. Alfredo Maestro um, is making wines along the Duero uh, River on that high, you know, continental, uh, you know, hot as hell in the summertime and, you know, cold and snowy in the wintertime, uh, part of, of Spain, you know. So, uh, you know, very near Ribera del Duero. This is all Tempranillo. Um, but it's declassified in a lot of ways. Um, another, uh, you know, kind of, you know, first generation uh, winemaker right here, you know, his, his first vintage was 1998. And he used to make pretty conventional wines. Like, um, he's very honest about his transition was in the early 2000s. He was just asking himself, like, why am I adding all of these, like, you know, uh, additions to wine? It doesn't make any sense if I'm trying to farm so organically in, in, the, in the vineyards, because he's biodynamic as well. So. Um, so he really just took a hard left turn and just tried to make the most pure wines possible. So uh, again, uh, you know, uh, lots of, of whole whole cluster uh, in this, but you know, any in any given vintage, he's between 50 and 100% whole cluster. That alone transforms the wine into kind of this next uh, level of, of textures and aromatics and longevity in, in, in the bottle. So uh, no additional sulfur, uh, so on and so forth. Just fresh, beautiful black fruit, so fun uh, uh, Spanish red there. So finishing up with uh, one of my uh, favorite winemakers. So this is Angela Osborne. Um, you know, we feature Angela's wines kind of throughout the shop in, in a few different ways. And we've also you know, featured uh, one of her wines in the cellar series. In fact, this is the first cellar series where we've, we, we've kind of re, you know, revisited producers with Berlotto and, and Angela Osborne here. So um, Tribute to Grace is, is the name of, of the winery. Um, and it's a specialty house for Grenache, for domestic Grenache. And damn, like, it is always good. Um, where these wines kind of like lead in and, and kind of live in this like, uh, you know, kind of uh, bright, medium bodied black fruit. Like this is textured and like big, there's spice to it. It's got this uh, lovely kind of ripe strawberry quality to the Grenache, um, but it's bigger than these wines. It just has more kind of going on. Uh, you know, with the weight and the spice to it. Um, you know, she makes about four, a little over 400 cases in this vintage of this wine. So again, a small operation, but uh, it really kind of brings it back home here pretty quick for me. I like to have balance with old world and new world. Um, and this is our, our one kind of token uh, uh, new world wine in here. Um, but it really kind of pulls its weight big time. So. This is the seller series from March. Um, a couple of quick things. I kind of wrote on a note here, um, uh, a man's name, uh, Josh Adler. And, uh, you know, Josh Adler um, is, uh, Josh Adler was a, uh, an amazing wine importer of French wines. He was the founder of Paris Wine Company. Um, we have featured many of his wines in our seller series very enthusiastically. Um, had a chance to uh, kind of meet uh, and taste wine with him on his home turf, uh, you know, in Paris. A really wonderful man who passed away recently and uh, thinking about him and his family and what it means to be a true lover of, of wines um, and to explore wines so um, 
that's it. It's March. Get out there in the snow and play right for a couple more weeks. Uh, but when you're done, come on in, pick this up. It'll be ready to go this weekend. Um, and we hope to see you in the shop soon. Thanks.